Hey everyone, welcome back to another Anime Kingdom review. As you can see by the title below, this is on episode 16 of Twin Star Exorcist. And I definitely enjoyed this one. This one is back to the main story. Last episode, we kind of it was kind of like a filler-like thing with Ryogo and his date with that one girl. And I had a couple theories about how the girl just seemed so, like, came out of nowhere. Like, she must have done something to do the, you know, the kick out of corruption to happen. But, of course, that ended up not really being uh, anything in this episode. I mean, it still could be possibly something in the future. But um, I was pretty wrong at that point, at least for now. Um, this episode, one thing I got to say, it's, it's mainly about, obviously, kick out, kick out of corruption. The last episode... It was more of a wake-up call for both Benio and Rokuto, with Sagan pretty much telling them, you know, they cannot be, they're not suited to be, you know, exorcists. And the whole time, like, the whole first half is mostly them kind of all gloomy. They can't believe what, you know, they, they, they can believe that they think they're just too weak now and all this kind of stuff. And they're pretty much just gloomy for the whole day. Mayuta is, you know, her normal self, always caring and everything, and is wondering what's wrong with them. She goes to the house and everything. And, you know, it's all nice and she tries to get them all happy again. I also love this episode for the point, the part of showing Mayura and Sagan, kind of showing their the father-daughter relationship there and, and, you know, how she really knows him considering he pretty much tells her, like, I'm not your dad anymore. I left you. You should just forget about me. But she knows that the reason he's doing this is because, you know, he cares about her and her mother and doesn't want them to get hurt for the possibility of what can happen to him. Because obviously you see all the stuff he has to go through. And he is a nice guy. So I do enjoy seeing that kind of character, you know, relationship kind of growth showing in this. Normally I don't care too much for like Mayuda and stuff. But it was nice to see that. And then of course the faded thing where we saw in the preview of the last episode. I was full on like, wow, they put that in the preview. They, like It's kind of like a huge spoiler of what we already know it's going to happen. That yes, Mayuta does turn in, you know, end up getting kick out of corruption and ends up turning into one of those things. To which Sagan comes, looks like he's gonna kill her because obviously that's the only way. Well, you know, exercise her. And the own, obviously, Rokuro cannot believe this is happening. He doesn't want this to happen. All of a sudden, we see this thing about um, resonance. And pretty much, we finally get to see more of that twin star power that we've seen in the past couple episodes. You know, like last one. Almost did it, and the one before, like before that, when they fought that um, one Kegata, they were able to use their powers together. So this one, we do get to see that it's like a, I guess, a hidden power. Like it did make sense. Sagan was like, oh yeah, there's people been saying that there's, you know, Twin Star Exorcist is an ability that only they can do. And I'm over here like, there's never been a Twin Star Exorcist before, right? So how the hell do they know anything about? these powers that they supposedly have that kind of didn't make sense to me maybe I, I, I don't know it more in the whole prophecy kind of thing it tells like everything about their powers and stuff but I didn't really understand that kind of thing like it was like how would you even know if there's never been twin star actions before you know but this one it, it was nice to also see obviously Sagan's point of view on how he looks at them especially Rokuro is that he hasn't really grown he always has these idealistic ways that he thinks is obviously naive and he still thinks he's like a kid but in this one he you see that he does get the you know they do get the approval of him and he does see and want you know Rokuro to continue thinking with those idealistic ways and to prove him wrong to show that his words aren't just words and they were able to do it it was pretty cool seeing them hold each other's hand um, Rokudo and Benio and all of a sudden start chanting the spell and everything and all of a sudden boom she comes down falling naked Rokudo one thing I gotta admit come on mayuta has got some big opa that was pretty nice to probably have be able to hold her in the moment right there and stuff yeah mm -hmm, mm -hmm, yeah pervert side aside it was a pretty good episode I did enjoy it it was um good characterization for Mayuta definitely showing I love the part with her and her father um, obviously the big portion of it was Rokudo and Benio kind of feeling down in the dumps they thought they weren't strong enough they weren't good enough they could you know they were not made to be what they wanted to do they want to kill all the Kegata and save everyone and stuff like that but you see that they do have their problems and issues and Sagan really got them thinking like oh my gosh we are too weak it is true kind of thing you know until finally Mayuta is able to stop change their way you know get them to thinking you know they can do this and everything get them happy and her turning into uh you know Kegata which was pretty damn cool it was pretty cool to see her 
and Sagan fight. Sagan kind of on the back foot. It seems like that, though I'm pretty sure it's kind of like he, you know, obviously hesitated a little bit because it, it is his daughter, even though she is corrupted kind of thing, you know? Um, but yeah, overall, it was pretty cool to see this entire episode. Good characterization for all the characterization and character development for the characters. Um, finally get to see some main storyline in this. And of course, guess what? Yuto is back at the very end. What's going to happen there? I am not sure. Hopefully, they continue on in the next episode with the main story. Do not want any more fillers at the moment. I want more of that main story because the main story honestly is pretty dang interesting. I do enjoy it. The action's cool. All the stuff is cool. Still kind of irritated by that whole squiggly line borders thing they have. In, in this one, usually they have it for when it's uh, kind of like a flashback thing. This one, it just had it when Sagan was talking to them. It didn't make any sense. I was like, why is this even here? Why do they do this? I don't understand, you know? But yeah, overall, honestly, definitely a better episode than it's been in the past. No filler, at least. It's not a filler. And I saw a lot of things, like, obviously, in the forums that some people were actually happy with how this was adapted at least in comparison to how it's been doing in comparison to the manga for the past how many episodes already so that's pretty good to see maybe hopefully it will be getting better and better honestly this if there is 50 episodes there's going to be a lot of fillers to which i'm not really happy about but hey maybe there will be some good ones i don't know we just gotta wait and see but yeah that's all i gotta say guys hope you enjoyed this anime kingdom review if you have any questions feel free to comment below if there's anything i missed and you want to talk about comment below as well and if you did enjoy the first table like and if you haven't already subscribe for more content it really does help the channel and yeah until next time guys see 